Okay. All right. So are we, we're live now, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. So, um, so government operations on April, I don't even know what day it is for. 17. 17. And I think it's Friday. Okay. So what we're going to look at today is um, Commissioner Sherling has um, agreed to give us a little update on issues, um, anything he wants to tell us actually. So uh, we'll go to the commissioner first and hear from him and if we have any questions. So, okay, commissioner, thank you for joining us and thank you for offering to give us an update. Good afternoon. Uh, thanks for having me. And uh, as I said earlier in the week, it's it's great to see the the Senate fully functional using technology. Um, I'll I'll uh, I sent along a few documents, uh, or Karen sent them for me earlier today, that give you a snapshot of some of the activities that uh, various divisions of public safety have been involved in over the last few weeks, including the state police, fire safety. And uh, well, we didn't ask emergency management to give a snapshot. Uh, we sent along a couple of representative samples of uh, work uh, in the form of situation reports from the daily uh, activities. Um, as you know, the, um, the Emergency Operations Center has been in uh, full activation since March 11th at about 7.30 in the morning. Uh, we're now running uh, the EOC virtually. Uh, we believe it's the only uh, completely virtual EOC operation uh, in the country, although we, don't, we can't completely verify that. Uh, that seems to be the case from the conversations the directors had with, uh, with other EM managers. Um, the snapshot of sort of top of mind activities right now, which have pivoted quite a bit over the last uh, five weeks, which are a bit of a blur, uh, at the top of the list of things that uh, uh, public safety is providing support to uh, across the array of state government and with uh, the assistance of folks not only in state government, but the guard, um, businesses, nonprofits, and a host of, of others, a cast of thousands, really. Uh, we're working to provide additional meal support um, starting next week for the Vermont Food Bank as their capacity has been outstripped. Um, we're continuing to work on build out of uh, delivery and supply chain for personal protective equipment for a wide swath of users uh, beyond the typical uh, distribution network that would be in place for uh, sort of a standard emergency, not one of this size and type. Um, we're providing uh, surge site support to the Agency of Human Services. Um, we're providing um, support and uh, leadership on data and modeling uh, of a variety of things ranging from um, the, the virus outbreaks them itself to our ability to continue to deliver services, personal protective equipment, ventilator capacity, uh, et cetera. We're doing uh, direct sourcing with partners from the UVM Health Network, um, buildings and general services, and a variety of Vermont businesses to source uh, key components of uh, supply chain from PPE to ventilators to other resources, thermometers. Um, and we are now actively involved as the pivot point between the Agency of Commerce and the Department of Health on the restart strategy to balance the business needs with the health overlay and the, the data-driven approaches that the, the governor has used and will continue to use um, uh, as a decision-making uh, set of decision-making points going forward. That's the, the, the nutshell version of, uh, of what's going on. It's a little difficult, if not impossible, to describe the operational tempo uh, that's been in place now for what seems like nine months, but I gather is only five weeks. So I'll leave it there and open it to uh, questions that uh, might be more illuminating than my um, droning on. Any questions? Uh, I can. May I? May yes. I yes, Allison. Uh, hi, Michael. Uh, uh, I guess, I, given the concerns that other uh, law enforcement communities around the country have faced in terms of uh, COVID among their ranks, you have yet to see that happen uh, in this state, right? 
That is correct. We've had uh, a couple of positives in, in law enforcement and first response in general, and we've had uh, a few folks uh, under uh, monitoring, but I think that our uh, proactive postures that we took very early on in creating models for alternative delivery strategies. Um, we monitor the health of the state police workforce on a day to day basis. Uh, all of those things have come together in a in a pretty positive way uh, to ensure that uh, we haven't seen the types of infections that some other folks uh, have seen. And that, of course, goes part and parcel with Vermonters paying attention to the guidance, the guidance statewide being issued. Um, at the right point in the curve and the overall mitigation strategies that knock on wood appear to have uh, have worked reasonably well to this point. And as you monitor uh, local law enforcement, is that true for uh, the, the police departments around the state that you are aware of? Yeah, we ask, uh, the Colonel can speak a little more to this. The Vermont uh, Intelligence Center sends a daily brief uh, to law enforcement and, uh, and then by extension, the fire service on COVID activities. And one of the things that's uh, at the top of that message that goes each day is a request for folks to report any uh, illnesses so we can map outbreaks in, in similar fashion to what we do with uh, at-risk populations with corrections and nursing facilities and things like that. And the reason being that we don't want uh, our first responders to be inadvertently vectoring disease right. into the community. Right, that, that's part of why I asked. Great, terrific, thanks. Anthony? You folks are doing a good job, so don't, don't take this question wrongly. I just wonder whether there's any lessons to be learned. Like if things, if you had issues around supplies or staffing, I'm just, I'm not, I'm not criticizing what you're doing. I'm just wondering about whether there were some, you know, obstacles that you found in the way. Oh, there's uh, innumerable obstacles, Senator, and there's innumerable things we'd probably do differently three weeks ago, knowing what we know now. Um, I, I started describing this a few days ago as uh, this whole event seems like a, a thousand foot, foot jigsaw puzzle that someone dropped onto a lawn and you had to spend a couple of weeks finding the pieces and then you had to spend a couple of weeks finding the edges and putting them together. And now we're just getting to the point where we can fill in the middle. Um, you know, among the top challenges have been really a, a need to re-engineer all of our emergency response methodology on the fly, because even the best modeling of pandemic response bore little or no resemblance to what we have had to do in the last um, really five weeks. But even before that, as we started to gear up for this, um, there was just no one on the planet ever contemplated that the entire planet would be uh, affected at the same time. So there's no ability for anyone to back up anyone else under the circumstances. And that's a typical way that emergency response works, particularly in that United States is with some kind of mutual aid uh, in Vermont, not only from other states, but from other countries, we're used to being able to call on Canada to bring resources to us when we're in need and vice versa. And we're unable to do that now uh, the other major um, logistical challenge has to do with supply lines and the fact that our uh, all of the critical supplies we need are manufactured in Asia. And um, I think the country is going to learn a, a, a hard lesson that we've got to figure out a way to be able to supply ourselves in times of crisis. Uh, but there'll be there'll be months of after action. Um, planning that goes on uh, and debriefing that goes on to uh, uh, sort of map out what we have learned and what we can learn from from everything that's unfolded for the last two months and beyond. I appreciate what so, you're doing. Anthony, I, did you want to no, follow I just, up, I, Anthony? I just said I appreciate what they're doing. Good. So I, um, I know one of the things that, and I keep attributing it to Susanna, but a lot of people are saying it now. We should be able to learn lessons from what we're doing now with what we might do differently, not just in an emergency, but in our regular day-to-day -day operations and policies and procedures. And so I hope that we're kind of keeping track of the, the changes that we've made in response to this, that we might want to think about making permanent changes to the way we, to the way we operate. Uh, I think you're absolutely right, Senator. Uh, state government and uh, 
and the American people have been forced to do things in different ways that they have not previously embraced. And many of these things we can continue to use as tools uh, that, that will be positive beyond the crisis. Just at, I, I attended a, a fire safety um, director's meeting. Uh, I don't even know when it was, maybe it was last week. Uh, and they observed that uh, a meeting that would typically encumber them largely for the day because they'd have to drive from all over Vermont to get to it, they're able to accomplish in 90 minutes and then get right back to work. So whether it's little things like that or big things like the changes that the Labor Department is making to the way unemployment claims ultimately will be processed with new technology. I know it's really bumpy now. They're working really hard. Um, the back end of all of this, there will be things that, uh, that work better uh, as a result of the experience. Allison. Uh, Michael, I'm uh, the mother of a firefighter who responded to uh, a mutual aid, a big fire in South Woodstock two nights ago. And needless to say, social distancing was impossible. Uh, I, I am a little concerned about, I mean, <clears throat> sadly, now having to self-isolate again for, uh, for uh, uh, at least a week. And he uh, has a, a job that is really challenging to be self-isolating. Is there any work that's being done to, to make it I mean, I, I, our first responders and ambulances, it's a little easier to be, uh, you know, have equipment that works uh, <laughs> when they're responding. Uh, is there any work being done for the firefighters to make that uh, uh, safer for them to actually do the right thing and, and support their fire, fire departments, but also not be professional, you know, just be compromised for the next two weeks? Um, well, on the front end of that, I know guidance has gone out to all first responders about the sort of the best response posture, which is uh, to minimize the number of people you have on a crew or responding to a particular emergency. In the case of a large structure fire, there's not a lot of, uh, not a lot of options there. Uh, you know, on the positive side with a fire response, the, the, the layers of gear that are available with Scott air packs and face shields and things are sort of endemic to the way that they respond. So hopefully, um, it, I, I guess I, I, would, I would suggest that the fire chief just check in with health and see what is prescribed in terms of isolation at this point. My sense is that um, if they were equipped, as I imagine they were fighting a structure fire, that there may not actually be a prescription for isolation um, okay. at this point. Thanks. I'll check with him. So um, I, I know that this isn't part of the response necessarily, but is the SEOC working at all or aware of kind of what's going on at Copley around the, the experiments they're doing? We are aware, uh, they're in closer contact with the epidemiology team through the Department of Health, Dr. Kelso uh, and her folks. Um, and I know uh, that it's uh, the, the, the serology mm -hmm. testing, I, should, I guess I should verify that that's what you're talking about. Yeah. Um, I know Dr. Levine indicated that uh, he thinks that their approach is, uh, is the right one in terms of using it as sort of a test bed but not relying on it as a, um, um, not over relying on it as a, as a pointer to, uh, to what the disease profile might look like right now. So um, there are a variety of Vermont uh, specific efforts going on around different testing that uh, we hope will help us uh, be able to paint a better picture of this virus's behavior so we can chart a more uh, lucid course over the next several months. Um, so I, I yesterday we um, talked, we heard about, um, or the other day we heard about funding for EMS systems, and um, Erica Borneman what is is the uh, conduit, the funnel for uh, through emergency management. Is she also the person that they should be um, addressing around the cares? It would all EMS funding go through Erica? or how would that work? Uh, I don't know what the conduit necessarily for CARES is, is going to be, but if, uh, if you send me a note, I will find out the, uh, uh, the right sort of 
channel or order of operation on that? I know that Adam Grisham is probably kind of overseeing all of it, but I just, um, we don't want to over, overburden anybody if there are better better channels for them yes. to use. If you send it to me, I'll, I'll find the right home, um, whether that's with the director or, or elsewhere. Okay. Any other questions for the commissioner? Allison, did you have a, did you have your no. hand up or was that just a? Thank you, Michael. We're just all very grateful. Thank you. And uh, thank all of your constituents for doing uh, their part to making sure that, that to, to getting us to this point with the curve bent in the, in the manner that it appears to be. So look forward to seeing you again soon. <laughs> so I will tell you, Commissioner, that um, I've heard from some um, law enforcement people around the um, perhaps speeding up the uh, certification for level threes and just some issues around the um, the academy and the training council and some of our mandated um, training that they that we mandated that they have to receive. So we're going to look at that on um, Tuesday, I believe, and you'll get an invite, but just so that you know, not necessarily that you will have to come. I just wanted you to know that. Great. If uh, uh, I'll certainly try to be there, um, but we'll certainly have someone from, uh, from public safety and state police there to, uh, to help with that conversation. Okay. So Commissioner Sherling, you always seem rather chipper, but you're finally starting to look a little tired. <laughs> That's a good thing it wasn't yesterday. Uh, yesterday, I, I was a little exhausted. Um, I, I don't know about Chipper, but um, <laughs> I, I'm confident that uh, in the skill level and dedication of the folks that are working on this and that uh, we've been lucky in Vermont to have the right people and uh, I think had the right balance so far. Um, I'm sure there have been things we've made mistakes on over the last five weeks and and will in, in the next few uh, but hopefully those are minimal um, so if I if I seem like I'm, I'm uh, upbeat it's because of of that and yeah. because frankly three weeks ago we were looking at projections that were quite scary and uh, at this point we've got things uh, in a good place we just have to keep them there for the yeah, long yeah. term that's the key well take good care of yourself so, yes Thank and can you. I I have shared this with um, senators, but just um, a little note about cabin fever that we're all suffering. Um, yesterday, I made a call to my ex uh, roommate up there, and um, when the and the phone an was answered by a woman, I said, "Hi, this is your ex roommate, and I miss you so much, and I'm so sorry." And I just went on and on, and the person said, "Who is this?" And I said, oh, is this not Claire? Did I dial wrong? And she said, yes. And I said, I'm so sorry. And she said, that's OK. You have a pleasant voice. Do you want to stay and chat for a while? So I think we're all. <laughs> so I, I think that um, <laughs> we all need to have that human contact. And she clearly had been cooped up for too long by herself. Uh, well, uh, that's a great story, Senator. I'm certainly not lacking human contact. It's all electronic. No. But, uh, yeah. Part of me tired as I talk from 5 a.m. until 8 p.m. every day. Yeah. <laughs> well, she was just a regular person. She wasn't involved in trying to solve these issues. So anyway, thank you very much for what you do. Thank you. Have a great day. Thanks. Thanks. Bye. Bye. <coughs> um, did we have okay sorry sorry about that um, uh, why don't we have um, I have Carrie Lafayette on for this discussion but I think that she is not with us right no, she's not. Yeah, I think that um, she is, we want her when we do the communities at risk, the conversation, right. because she represents both the disability community and the Low Income Advocacy Council. 
So, um, and then we have Betsy Ann Rask listed under this discussion. Betsy Ann, did you have anything that we need to um, address here? Hey, Madam Chair. No, I was just listening in today at, on today's discussion. Okay, yeah. all right. So let's just move to the next one then, which is the posting of notices and agendas and minutes. And um, Gwen, would you like to, to um, bring us up to date on that? <clears throat> um, hello everyone, this is Gwen Zakov, um, VLCT. Um, I don't know exactly what you want me to testify towards. I um, I'm, can talk about um, what we're asking for. I don't know. Okay. I, I believe that Karen had testified earlier, so I don't know if you needed me to fill in any gaps or answer any more <laughs> questions. No, and I think, do we have John Flowers with us and Mike Donahue? Uh, this is John Flowers. Okay, John. And is Mike Donahue with us also? Yes, I am. Okay. So, Gwen, why don't you just um, lay out the, the issue for us so that both John and Mike can hear kind of what the issue was because they weren't with us before when we, when we talked about it and give us your ask. Oh, right. Okay. okay. So the, the, sure, absolutely. The, so the ask sure. is to uh, do a temporary allowance for um, other postings outside the realm of public uh, postings in physical locations um, that could be um, electronic means, whether it be um, a newspaper or front porch forum or the like, or a town website to supplement um, those postings that uh, may or may not be seen, most likely won't be seen um, when they're posted in public. Um, the one new add to this would be um, a link to what the governor's uh, press conference touched on today that we just learned that the town clerk's offices um, um, are going to be gradually reopening, obviously not for public um, to be an, in attendance, but for town clerks to have some um, level of presence in their um, offices um, starting on Monday the 20th. Um, so keeping the physical location of postings at the city hall or town hall or town clerk's office would be uh, perfectly adequate because there will be someone manning the fort essentially who would be able to do those postings on behalf of um, a, uh, a board um, chair or um, vice chair or a member. And um, then the other two postings would be, um, hopefully we could get it to be a um, online version. Um, again, whether it be a newspaper um, or a website um, or the like. And um, we're only asking it for it to be temporary um, for, you know, I mean, again, the, this COVID-19 you know, uh, crisis. Um, and we are asking that, um, you know, if, if it, um, pleases the committee and makes it easier for the legislature to really narrow the scope of this to really just mean the notices, because the ones we've heard most about are notices for posting agendas um, and warnings for meetings under the open meeting law. Um, so that would be pretty much any um, meeting. And then the meeting or the, then the postings for um, AMPs, the uh, appropriate municipal panels, stuff under Title 24 for zoning stuff. So when they have to do posting, physical postings there. Um, we haven't heard much about any, and as of yet, we haven't heard um, concerns about other physical postings, but those, you know, may or may not be um, coming down the line, but at least the ones we hear about from um, zoning officials and from um, board officials is the, is the, the regular meeting uh, warnings and notices. So I think okay. that pretty much covers it. Okay. Allison? I thought we'd taken care uh, of the notices of, of, of meetings. I thought we were discussing legal notices for the towns to be added to do electronic. I thought that's what this conversation was about, particularly with Mike Donahue present. We have not, we have not, uh, we had a, a short conversation about um, the allowing them to not post in the three places. Yeah. Um, I and at the time, we were also considering not having to post at the town clerk's office or at the town hall office because they were running out of posting space, window right. space. 
Um, but we decided we did not do anything about it because we felt that it was important to hear from other people, including the media. So we have Got not we have not done this yet. I, yeah, I that's why we're doing it. Looking at it today. Got it. So, um, John, do you want to um, weigh in on this? Now that you well, heard the um, issue. If, if he's okay, I've, I've only got 30 years in Vermont journalism. My, Mike has around 60. So I'd, uh, I'd like him to start. Uh, and I, I, I'm certainly happy to uh, add on to what he says if, if I can. Uh, I'll defer to him because he's a youngster. <laughs> okay. Well, <laughs> uh, we, we in the industry uh, are, don't, I believe, have a problem with an online option during this temporary phase to go along with uh, any official posting that might be done at, in terms of hard copy at the town clerk's office or elsewhere. We just like um, for newspapers to play a role in that. Uh, we've been, I think we've proven to be a quite a, a, a vibrant lifeline uh, to people during this crisis where most of us are working off site. Uh, we're still doing our reporting. Um, we're uh, getting some nice support in terms of uh, a boost in, in subscriptions from people who are recognizing mm -hmm. that we're, we're out there and working. Um, I want to say uh, thank you to our own uh, Senator uh, Christopher Bray and other members of the delegation that have been supporting the paper as well. And um, so if there is any kind of posting requirement um, we would like you to consider newspapers as an avenue for that to be done. Uh, we reach a lot more people through social media uh, uh, and uh, through our own social media sites, our websites, and our hard copies. We, we would also remind people that there are uh, areas of the state that aren't well connected um, to the Internet, and um, we are even more vital in those areas. Uh, and... Um, you know, we do tend to serve a lot of people who aren't on Facebook, who don't get, uh, who don't want to get front porch form or have no use for it, uh, and and vehicles such as that. And we would argue that, uh, you know, newspapers would be a good, a good way to inform people of public uh, notices. I think that we had had part of this conversation about a year and a half ago when there was a request to allow people to only post on electronic means and not to have to do newspapers. And we chose not to go there at the time. So I think that, um, that there is still the requirement that, they, that things be posted in newspapers of general jurisdiction, I believe. So uh, Ms. Bray, did you have a? Yeah, um, so uh, I'm glad that, um... John and Mike are able to join us today. Um, I'm going to be a little more blunt than than they're being, and that is that I, I just I hope that while whatever temporary rules we put into effect won't have any unintended consequence in terms of reducing the amount basically of of business that goes to our newspapers because they're already under financial stress, and so. Uh, it would just be perverse that at a time where we need them the most, that any kind of um, workaround for the next month, two, three, whatever it turns out to be, might result in less uh, traffic going to them. That's, and they're not going to say that, but I'll say that. <laughs> so I, oh, I appreciate it. I, I guess I'm, I will. Okay, go ahead, Mike. Well, okay, thank you, uh, Madam Chair. And just for the record, uh, Mike Donahue, Executive Director of the Vermont Press Association, also the uh, Vice President of New England First Amendment Coalition. I did speak yesterday uh, to the, uh, I was involved a little bit with the uh, House Government Operations discussing the same thing, so I do know a little bit. Um, uh, I will say that we have not heard any problems from municipal officials uh, ab about this issue, and since our reporters are out there covering things you think we would have heard but uh, this is not a time to reduce transparency i would thank uh, senator bray for his kind comments uh, um, uh, 
if if for some reason you were going to reduce transparency and only go with one uh, location, I would uh, concur with John that it ought to be newspapers. Uh, obviously, they're being delivered to the doorstep. They're being picked up uh, in the community. They're online and everything like that. Yesterday, there was a, a push to allow, if there was going to be one place, it would be at the municipal office. But the municipal offices are closed. And so I, I'm sort of like, thinking about well, who, who's, who, only who's driving by? Who's driving what? by, you know, to the town office? Mike, we completely lost you. Are you there? Mike, we completely lost you for a period of time. You keep going in and out. Actually, okay. Madam Chair, I think you're we, out again. we lost you. We could hear Mike fine. What? We could hear oh, Mike okay. fine. I you think you got lost. You yeah, lost you. Okay. Now. Okay. Well, let me let me uh, just back oh. up just a, just oh. a hair. Are you hearing me now, Madam Chair? Yes. 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 Okay. We've never not heard you. Yeah. Good. <laughs> so, uh, so we would support newspapers being the uh, if you were going to reduce transparency and go to one site. Newspapers ought to be the one since they are getting out and about in the community. Uh, somebody had proposed yesterday the town offices would be a place to post them, but I'm not sure people are driving by their town offices when a lot of them are closed and the clerks are working inside uh, to read a bulletin board or to read uh, what's on, on the class. So if you're looking for the greatest transparency, um, I know the town of Middlebury buys display ads even long before this. I believe they buy display ads for their full agendas for their select board meetings and others. Town of the city of Barry does it and uh, it's great for transparency. So that's all we would say if you have some questions. And, and I'd also concur the issue yesterday also was the lack of uh, connection uh, in some of the rural areas. Uh, is, a, is a problem for some of those towns. Thank you. We're, we're still hearing you, Mike, but Jeanette's frozen again. So I... Still. Still. I can, <laughs> am I frozen? Yes. yes. Uh, I, I, I don't... What? Uh, what Jean to say? Jeanette? Can you hear me now? Yes, yeah. only every word every now and then. Can I make a suggestion? You might turn off your video and you might have a better link just as audio. And I can only hear you every now and then. Is that better? Yes. 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 Is that, is that better? Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Well, I, I, I is like Allison the frozen? I better there anyway. So, no, <laughs> in your dreams, Brian, <laughs> in your dreams. Okay, so we, I think we heard Mike. I, I just wanted to go back to uh, the uh, situation where the governor has allowed the city or the city hall or town clerk's offices to be open with two people uh, inside. Does that change any of this for anybody? Apparently Can I not. just say one thing, uh, Senator? Uh, one of the comments was made that some of the clerks don't want to go out into the community to post the notices. Um, and I'm, I'm, not sure, I'm not sure. Uh, I mean, they've got to go out and get their groceries and a lot of the places are supermarkets that are one of the posting places. So um, now there's two people that will be able to go out and about, uh, it sounds like from what the governor is saying. It also seems to me that even though the clerk's office will be open and the clerk might be in there working, 
it's not going to, they're not necessarily going to be a lot of regular citizens stopping by to chat or to look at notices. It seems like even though the office is open, most people are staying home, so they wouldn't see the notices as much at the clerk's office, even though the clerk's office is open. Agreed. Can anybody hear me? Yes, Madam okay. Chair. Yes. Now you have to say something. <laughs> <laughs> well, obviously we've got an issue. It's hard to prove a negative. Right. I, I guess I'm still trying to figure out what we're trying to decide here. Yes, I, I'm in the same boat as you, Brian. I'm I'm unclear. I mean, if they post them three places, certainly right now without legislation, they can post one of the posting places. Could be the newspaper. There is no. Uh, each town has a different uh, uh, rule on this, and it, it strikes me that I mean, we could just you could just do this now. Right. Yep. Gwen, is that the well, case? Well, my understanding, my understanding, if I can, uh, the clerks did not want to go out into the community and post them at the hardware store, or the post office, uh, whatever. Yes. Uh, and um, so they wanted to just maybe post at the town office where nobody's going to. So uh, that's going to really cut down on the transparency. Okay, so let me let me let me step in here so we know exactly what we're talking about. So under Title One, it says municipal public bodies shall post notices of special meetings in or near the municipal clerk's office. So that's already a requirement. So that's not. Nothing would change by saying they do or they don't. That's already a requirement there. And then it says. And in at least two other designated public places in yes. the municipality. So when you're talking about public places, the way courts have interpreted and the way the law has been interpreted, public places are physical postings. So they have to be physically posted somewhere else, whether it be the post office or the hardware store or the grocery store or the rec fields or who, wherever it might be in your town. Um, and so the ask was to say, if we're not at a stay home, stay safe order, and we cannot leave our homes to do postings, I'm the chair of my planning commission. Um, I don't have the authority to go out other than to go grocery shopping and to go to medical appointments if needed. Um, you'd be in violation of the order by doing these postings. And that's been the discomfort for chairs and um, those that are doing these postings, not just town clerks, because a lot of town clerks don't do these postings on behalf of those boards. So the request was to say, is there other ways we can do this dissemination of information instead of in designated public places physically, they could do designated public places that might be in their, uh, like in lieu thereof, a newspaper, a town website, a, again, front porch forum or some manner where um, they don't have to physically go out into, um, into the world to do postings that may or may not be seen. That is what the request has been. Yes. Can, can anybody hear me now or yeah. see me? Yes. I keep, I keep losing you all the time. I have not been able to say a word for the last. I, I just wanted to try and make it clear that we're not asking that they only post it in one place, the newspaper. All of those things are still required. We're just asking that they not have to post it in the grocery store or the deli or the co-op or the laundromat. That's all the ask is, right, Gwen? Y yes, the request yeah. is to just l get rid of those. And in addition, add ones that they could do in, in lieu thereof. Not saying they would post in just one place. Right. They could post in three different places, but it would be in places that places that people would actually see it, whether it be a newspaper or whether it be online or on a town website. They have not legally been able to do this under the interpretation of this current law. Yes. But, but quite, honest, quite honestly, this is what's happening now. I mean, all, almost every town, I mean, the town websites are where people are going to get information. And, news, and, and we've news never had, and I, and, and Senator Clarkson, we've never had the legal, no, no one yes. has said that's a legal posting under state law. So our towns have always gone out and done these physical postings yes. um, because courts have interpreted that way. So they can continue to post on all those other places, front porch forum, the newspaper, the town website, everywhere else. They just don't have to put it in the grocery store or the laundromat. We're just right. asking that they not, so we could, the language could be Tucker, I would think, 
that they not have to post in, that they have to continue to post but the town hall. They do not have to post in two other physical locations in the town, but they have to make sure that posts are done so that in newspapers and in, and it doesn't cost anything to put up, uh, it's only legal notices that cost in the newspapers, right? Uh, no, mean, you, madam. No, madam chair. That, they, well, it depends on the newspaper. They're all independent, but that would be like placing a classified ad or I think the town of Middlebury and Barry, though they're buying display ads, not classified ads, but block ads like you see for stores. Because oh, I think our newspaper, what they do is they, anyway, they always have just did a, have do a list of meetings in the area. It, but that, just, what, I'm talking about, what I'm talking about is not just a list of the meetings, but it's the full agenda. We'll say oh, call I to see. order, uh, yeah. flag salute, uh, gotcha. you know, minutes, approval, warrants, everything. Okay. Chris? So uh, I, I don't know if what Wynn might be thinking of or if we have language already, sorry. The, it would seem as though just specifying that we don't, that the, all, the two, one approach would be to say the two alternative postings or whatever they're called may be satisfied by an electronic posting, including an, uh, you know, newspapers or something like that. So we're not waiving the number of posts, we're not reducing the amount of exposure, we're just allowing for electronic to satisfy the, the other postings that the law has been interpreted to mean physical postings. Can we just make that clarification of interpretation in the statute? Madam Chair, I think Tucker? if I could just add, Madam Chair, every town has to declare a newspaper of record every March when they have their organizational meeting. So there is a newspaper of record right. for the town for legal notices. It would just be an extension. Um, um, Senator, um, this is Gwen Dockov again. I just wanted to point out that, you know, there are town websites. So if towns do have websites, they can certainly have that be an option as well. They can ha have it be a newspaper of record as well. I mean, the only problem with having it having to be a newspaper is that sometimes the newspaper of record doesn't get printed every single day or every two days or every three days. Um, and therefore, a lot of these requirements, like, for example, when you're doing the time, place, purpose of a special meeting under the open meeting law, there is a 24 hour sort of like at least 24 hours before the meeting. Um, if it's a regular meeting, it's 48 hours. So there might be instances where you aren't getting your, um, you aren't able to get your um, newspaper to print in the time necessary to do the warning if they're working under those 24 to 48 hour limitations. Tucker. Well, I think a good compromise might be that if, uh, John Flowers, uh, that if, uh, the the communities were instructed to you know if if a electronic version is is uh, needed or directed that it be that newspaper the newspaper of record be one of the mandated recipients along with any other uh, social media vehicle they choose as well so that if you know the newspaper of record is included as well as a you know, another electronic uh, vehicle that would be fine. And by the way, most of uh, our, our most of the newspapers have their own websites, so that we have the capacity to react to postings very quickly as well. Tucker, I just wanted to offer a little bit of clarity for Senator Bray and for some of the questions that have just come up. Uh, if this is going to be dealing with the application of the open meeting law to these general meetings that Gwen was bringing up, there are really two instances where the two other designated public places comes up. The first is in announcing the time and place of a special meeting. And uh, when you hold a special meeting, in addition to posting, you have to publicly announce and publicly announcing includes uh, a press release that would be issued to the editor of a newspaper 
probably, although it's not expressed in the open meeting law, the newspaper of record for that particular public body. Um, however, the municipality there is not obligated to buy ad space. They just have to announce to the media organizations that serve their area that this special meeting is happening. The second instance in the open meeting law that you are concerned with here is the posting of agendas. And uh, the municipalities are required to uh, post in two categories of locations. The first is if the municipality has a website, then they have to post the agenda on their website. If they don't have a website, obviously they're not required to, but if they do, they're required to post it on their website. And the second is that they have to post it in or around the office of the clerk of the municipality and in two designated public places in the municipality. And as Gwyn pointed out, because of that separation between that electronic posting place and then the way that that phrase is put together, two other designated public places in the municipality, those are physical locations. So Thank you. I guess I'm feeling even more confused than I was before, but if we just eliminated that phrase and two other physical locations in the community, shouldn't and didn't say anything more at all, does that take care of what we need to do? That would get at the part of the base request, which would be the municipalities would still be posting in or around the town clerk's office. If it's a special meeting, there would still be the requirement that it is publicly announced. Uh, when you're talking about the agendas, there would still be the requirement that if the municipality has a website, it gets posted to the website and that it gets posted at the town clerk's office. Right. Is that, I mean, and it doesn't require people to pay for an ad in the newspaper or anything else. If, if it's a legal notice, then they would have to do that. But if it's an agenda or minutes, they wouldn't necessarily, we don't want, I don't think we want to add more, more um, requirements to them now than they have currently have. I thought we were just taking away those two public places. I thought so too. Me too. Chris, Chris. Okay. Um, well, if we're taking away, I think the phrase that Tucker, did I get this right? Two other designated places in the community or municipality. Yes. Right. So you could also say two, and then, then that's been interpreted as physical locations. Mm -hmm. If you said two other designated places, um, you know, physical or electronic in the community, you could just open the door to however it makes the most sense for them to get the word out. But aren't they already required to do it on their website and they are for special meetings or anything else, they're required to notify the newspaper of record right. that they've chosen. So, I mean, I guess we could put two other, that they are required to do at least two other places that could be electronic or physical if everybody felt more comfortable with that. That's what I thought we were saying. That's, what I, I, that's the direction I thought we were heading anyway. Right. That instead of three physical locations, there'd be the, the, the town clerk's office and two other locations, electronic or physical. Right. Does that, and John, Mike? Well, I, you know, I, if if there could be in some way that the newspapers could be included, and I'm not saying that because we're looking for revenue, even if there is no financial uh, incentive or in no no financial penalty for, um, you know, a, a newspaper could receive such notices and choose to print them without compensation is what I'm saying. And um, part of this. And I know that's probably not germane to this discussion, but there there might be a slippery slope here if 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 uh, um, local governments start funneling all of their stuff to front porch forum um, and 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 excludes uh, local media from that equation. You know, it it just it's going to continue, and um, you know we'd like to be part of. Of, of of the process and um yeah i mean that's 
kind of part of the way I feel about it. So that if we could be copied on on stuff that that is sent to other uh, electronic media, that would that would be good. So why- under the law, under the law right now, uh, every newspaper can ask that copies of agendas be sent to them. And I think most towns carry them over from year to year. You're supposed to ask every year, but you know, mm-hmm. I think once you get on a distribution list for like the Woodstock select board, I'm sure that uh, the Valley news and the Vermont standard get the agendas and everything like that. So that's, those are going to them. Uh, the question is the actual agenda that, like I said, that says, you know, flag salute, approval of minutes, public to be heard, you know, uh, police department, uh, discussion of speed limit, you know, all those things that are on a regular agenda. Uh, that's what I think we're discussing here is how does the public know what exactly they're going to be talking about? If there, if, if there's a line or there's to fire the police chief, the people ought to know it as opposed to just that there's a meeting on Tuesday night that the select board is meeting. So what if we, what if we worded it this way, the the near on or near the municipal site or whatever, however that language is exactly. And two other places, electronic or physical, at least one to be the newspaper of whatever that word is that they, of a record. Record, yeah. Yeah. Well, that that works for me. I mean, when I said, uh, when I said um, before about two other places, electronic or whatever. I kind of was presuming newspapers was one of them, to tell you the truth. I just didn't phrase it right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Brian? Yes, I-, I agree too, and I'm, I'm sympathetic to Mike and John. There are places in Vermont that don't have consistent, dependable internet access. So you can put it on the website all you want, but if nobody can get to it, it really doesn't do any good. So I think there still has to be, forgive me for saying it this way, some old school way for people to get the message. And so I agree that we should we should call out newspapers as one of the acceptable methods. Gwen, did you? I think the only concern with this would be the cost that would go into the postings, and it's considerably expensive to do newspaper um, postings for town. So I think the, you know, other than the cost of um, the gas and the paper to post in a grocery store is um, considerably less than the cost of posting for every town for newspapers. So I think that would be a concern for my town. So uh, well, I, I think, have, aren't I think we that's... just talking? Aren't we just talking during the, this emergency period? We're not talking yes. in the law. Yes. Yeah. Yes. yes, but but so even there's, during... there's not that much of just the cost. Hold on. Even during this emergency period, which could last for some time and could pop up again in the fall, there is a cost. So, Mike, when you said that right now, um, editors can ask towns to send them all the minutes and the agendas, if they choose to print those, do they charge the town or do they just print them? Because I I don't want to incur extra costs for the towns, but we want to be able to have stuff out there. So how do they charge right now? If if the town of Pudney sends um, the agenda and the minutes to the Brattleboro Reformer, the Reformer can do anything it wants with those, right? It doesn't have to print it exactly like it is. It can say there's going to be a meeting Tuesday, Monday night, and they're going to talk about the should we change from a town manager form of government that how do they handle that now uh essentially one of two or three different ways one they can just list it as a meeting in a whole Mm -hmm. government calendar of here are the town meetings for uh wyndham county and uh we show who's meeting on which nights um once they get that agenda um they could write a news story if they are going to fire the police chief or Mm -hmm. whatever if they see something on the agenda and want the public to know about it and and 
the third way is that they would just buy buy an ad that would uh, uh, include and show everybody exactly what is on the agenda for the Monday night meeting. But we're so every not town talking, is different. Every every town and newspaper is different. And we're not just talking here about select board meetings and D DRB meetings. We're talking about the tree committee and the cemetery committee. And do we really want to have towns have to pay for putting an agenda for the cemetery committee and and then minutes for the cemetery committee in every time? Well, again, a lot of the government meetings have been canceled. Uh, I know several towns say they aren't meeting until May, at least. They've canceled all government meetings. So there aren't that many. Uh, and, and I will tell you that, that the standard posting of agendas is commonplace in advertising in a lot of other states. Vermont is, is somewhat unique that they don't require the posting of agendas and things like that from what i've been told and the, and people pay for it in all those other yeah states. In, in all those other states their towns must have be a little more flush than ours <laughs> well it's not that expensive but it's a lot. um okay committee where are we i i thought that we were only talking about eliminating two physical locations that's sort of what I thought we were talking about. So Tucker, do we have the, the kind of suggestion that I made two other sites, electronic or physical, at least one to be the newspaper of record? Does that work? Does that work with anybody except Anthony and me? Yeah. Okay, I see Chris. I see Brian. I hear Allison. <laughs> She's at a loss of words. No, I was wanting to say something. Okay. okay. I, I, I think I think that um, I I wouldn't I I mean as much as I love uh, our local weekly papers I wouldn't necessarily put that burden on uh, for a notice. I mean my Billings Park Commission is not going to pay. For an ad, for a, a notice in in the Vermont standard, we're just not going to do that. Uh, it's, you know, for our next meeting, it, it, uh, it's just crazy to think that the commissions, all these small little commissions, are going to do that. I I I think so too. Using the website and the and the posting at town hall, and somebody's been sticking it up at the e EMS building. I, I I just not. I think to have to pay for a, a notice of a very small little town commission is too much to ask but i agree but i wouldn't put the paper of public record i i think that's too much for an open meeting agenda on for small commissions it could get pretty costly if you have if yeah. the newspapers are going to charge and and yeah. um i would just for say all of those whatever two other places they come up with, Anthony, did you? Oh, you were putting yourself on mute. Okay, where are we? Why, why can't we just say two other places to be flexible? But, and currently the newspapers can request that the towns send them the agendas and the minutes for meetings. Am I correct about that? Tucker, you're shaking your head, yes? And, yeah, any town, Okay. Any, anybody can, not just newspapers, any right. citizen. So if the newspaper makes that request and, the, and it comes and there's something of interest in there that the new, like um, Arbellos Falls uh, just fired their um, town manager and their canine yeah. uh, <laughs> dog, um, they fired they, that fabulous new town manager? Well, they didn't renew her contract, so she quit. Oh my God, she was great. Well, yes, <laughs> I'm not gonna go into that. <laughs> because I guess we, they didn't think so. <laughs> we, have the, we have the world listening to us perhaps, so I will be quiet. But 
the, those, so if the, if they sent the agenda to the reformer and the reformer says, oh, wow, this looks pretty interesting. They're going to talk about the contract for the town manager, or they're going to talk about the, the um, police dog. They could do a story on it or they could print it, but it wouldn't necessarily be a legal notice that they would have to print the whole agenda. They would get the whole agenda, whatever they chose to do with it, which is the way it works now, right? We don't require towns to print the and pay for the entire agendas and minutes. No. No. Is yeah. I'm, the, in, if I could just give one perspective as a mm -hmm. as a reporter, if if we could be if it could be said that we should be copied on whatever public notices are sent out to um, other electronic sources, it, that we it be mandated that we we be one of the recipients. Yes, then we would have the discretion to um, to print that uh, or as much of it as we as space will permit. And then mm -hmm. it would also certainly inform us about uh, kind of the news coverage capabilities. I, uh, we have some town clerks in our area in Addison County who unfortunately reflexively send all of their public notices to Front Porch Forum or through the, the town's Facebook site and have bypassed the local paper, you know, not recognizing that a good many of our seniors don't use social media or email uh, the, to get their news. Uh, so the, if, if we could, it could be said that we should be one of the recipients, the mandated okay. recipients for those notices, that would be great. Okay, that makes yeah. sense. Allison? I'm sorry, on weekly papers, if you have a, a meeting that is called within a week, with, but keeping with the two 20, 48 hour notice requirement, you're not gonna get it posted in time. I mean, it, my it, weekly it, paper, it, it's just too long a lag sometimes between the deadlines and when the meeting might be but I, but, if but it's posted online but, but if they're copied posted online if the, at the newspapers just wait if the co newspapers are copied they some of them won't be able to meet the timeline some of them might but we're not going but mm -hmm. and they're not required to um the town isn't required to have them a notice there they're required to copy the newspaper. Right. The newspaper can put it online if they have an online service. They don't have to do anything with it. They could send out a reporter if they if it sounds interesting to them, or they could ignore it. But if we just right. say that they are to should be copied on every notice that goes out to these that is posted on the town uh, site, the municipal office, and at least two other places physical or electronic and that the newspapers are copied uh the newspaper of record is copied on all of those notices yep and that's that, that, just that, punching that, in a, a website or a, an email address yeah that doesn't sound very complicated to me i i write a column periodically and i just put in the three newspaper outlets that i deal with and send it off it's no, oh, I, I know I do that to seven and I, I do that, but I know right. when the deadlines are and some, anyway, fine, do whatever you do, if, if they send it out and the newspaper doesn't get it till after the meeting, at least they've sent it. Yeah, and 95% of us, I would wager, have our own websites as well at this point. Yeah, but we're talking primarily we want newspapers because of those people like me who still read my physical newspaper every morning. Me too, yeah. I'm right with you. So, Tucker, does something like that work? Yes, something like that can work. Uh, when would you like to have language ready for? Gwen? Hi, sorry. <laughs> This muting button thing is a little confusing. Um, I we were hoping for it as soon as you could. That would be great. Um, I think the language that you're proposing for at least noticing the newspapers without any, you know, money exchanging hands. I think that's a lot better. I think that um, is doable. Um, I, my question only would be, 
um, how many other places would they have to send the notice out? Would that that email sent off to you know the Herald um, be considered one of the notices? Um, would it not? Would you still keep the town clerk posting? Like what what would what would be the because right now it's um, three places, right? Yep. Um, but it sounds like maybe we're going to four places. There'd be two electronic plus the town clerks plus the newspaper. My concern would be that maybe if a town is already having to post to a website, um, if they have one, they might not have two other electronic places plus the newspaper. So maybe it's just a, one electronic in addition to the newspaper. No, it says, I thought we said two other sites, electronic okay. or physical. And okay. And newspaper, the newspaper record to be copied. Okay, that sounds good. Okay, I was I, my apologies. I was a little confused, but that okay. sounds good. Yeah, I mean, I think that solves everyone's problem. I think that the newspapers are in the know. You know, whether they get it, you know, in enough time to print is, you know, I guess another story. But, you know, at least they're getting noticed, and um, towns officials aren't having to go out and post in places that that people aren't seeing those. So we are, um, uh, we are, we don't have permission to. Uh, Brian, did you have a question? Are no. we fixing your glass? Okay, okay. I just want to make sure that you get heard. If All set. Um, okay, we uh, have not gotten permission to vote on this. So Tucker, if you could write something up, I will go to the rules committee, ask them if they can perhaps um, have a quick meeting on Monday or one day next week. We will not be. We are meeting on the floor in a floor session on Monday, at which time we will be voting on um, the uh, other tax. bill that we did around um, around property the property taxes um, with the VLCT. And, and um, we'll be voting on that on Monday. And then um, we probably, we might have another floor session by the end of the week. And if we could have it ready for that, that would be great, but we may not have another floor session because uh, I, I would love to get it, be able to get it over to the house so they could deal with it. Um, they apparently might have a floor session on Friday. So, Allison? Uh, Jeanette, uh, yes? you, might, you might ask uh, the president pro tem if there could be a, rules, a quick rules meeting this weekend and get it so that we could get it on the calendar for Monday. It, it would not go on the calendar for Monday anyway, and be, and I would I think that this one could end up having a lot of questions, and I think that it would be better to have to put it off until the end of the week or even next week because the house will not be in a position to take it up yet anyway, and I'd rather get all the questions answered from the senators before we go to the floor. Brian, well, you brought up the house, so. Mike mentioned that he had testified before the House Government Operations Committee yesterday. Are they also going to craft something? That might be another way to do it is to wait for them to do it on Friday and then we could concur. I, as, far as, I, as far as I know, uh, Senator, uh, there was uh, nothing uh, okay. requested to be uh, drafted or anything like that. Yeah. This was just more of a discussion uh, to see, and it, there was there was three topics that they were talking about yesterday, and this just happened to be one of them. Okay, never mind then. Thank you. Yeah. And I think they have they have such a buildup of bills that we've been sending over that um, they at this point are still responding to what we're sending them. But I will I will also contact Sarah Copeland Hanses and John Gannon and John Gannon. I don't know if he's out there listening or not, but he listens to many of our, most of our meetings so that he can keep up, up with what we're doing. So Tucker, does that work if we could have it? Um, we're meeting again on Tuesday afternoon. Yes, you. I will get it ready before then so that you can have it and consider it and do what you will with it. Uh, I would not be doing my lawyerly duties if I didn't ask this question. With these locations, do you want them to be designated electronic locations? No. What do you mean? That so we would the, designate them? The legislative body of the municipality would actually have to vote on what these 
locations would be, which would be their way of announcing or designating what these new locations would be. Oh, it's important whether you want that word to appear or not. I, I see that. Um, Gwen, what do you think? Sorry. Um, so I'm, what was the question again, whether or not to have the, the legislative body determine that or not to determine that? Um, the question is whether uh, to have these be designated locations, having the legislative or public body that is making the announcement designate what the locations are going to be ahead of time by some official act or whether it's just required that they post it when they are posting it to two locations. Yeah, I think just given the nature of how things are moving right now, I think that it makes more sense to just leave it open for them, for each body to sort of do with what seems fit because it's going to be hard to gather every single body to make a determination for what would be theirs or to have a legislative body make the determination for another body like the DRB doing their postings under, you know, title 24, 4464, you know, those areas. So I would, I'd, I think it would be better to just leave it and just say, doesn't have to be designated, just have it be those up to the, the bodies to make the determination. Could it, could it be, could we say something about that each, each body or each entity needs to be consistent in where they post it? Because I, I don't think it makes any sense for the select board to post on the town. Well, they have, on the town website one week and the front porch that week. And then the next week to do it on Facebook and someplace else. I think that they need to be somewhat consistent about where they're posting. So I don't know how to word that. And, and, and also one of them, if they have a town website needs to be the town website. Don't we have that already? Tucker, don't we? I think I may have caused confusion by using the word legislative body. The question is whether the public body that is going to be making these announcements right. and posting these things should be required to designate the location that they're going to be posting on. Yeah. The word designated, if it's included, will require them to name the place that they're going to be posting these to. So the parks group might be posting at a different place than the cemetery commission, but they would each determine to those places where they're gonna be. So people know, can consistently find their postings Correct. instead of changing them every week. Anthony? Do we currently make them designate where they're gonna post the public ones? Yes. We do. It is a designated location. So it says the grocery store is like official. Right. And I, from what I understand, and again, I'm not out there practicing with the municipalities, the mu municipality designates locations for purposes of, you know, their legislative body, and then most of the other public bodies that are operating within the municipality will also use those locations. Right. Maybe because the clerk is typically the municipal officer who is kind of broadly handling the posting of these notices and stays consistent with where they're being posted. I actually like that. Chris, did you have a, Madam, I thought I saw your hand up. Madam Chair, I, I would really urge you to sort of mandate like the select board does and uh, like uh, Tucker said, where, where you designate for the whole town so that the cemetery commission isn't doing it one way, the planning commission another way, and and you got to guess and try to remember who's doing what. It's just yeah. easier. Absolutely, I, I I agree with you. The legislative body should make that decision. Yeah, it makes sense. Okay. All right. So, at least one, two other sites, if the electronic or physical, designated two other designated sites, electronic or physical. If the town maintains a website, one of them has to be the town website and copies have to be sent to the newspaper of record. Correct. And the reason that I asked about the designated is that this may be very simple temporary provision 
because everything that you're discussing, including the posting on the municipal website, if one exists, is already in the underlying law. Mm -hmm. So is the designation. So the change would be that instead of the two other designated public places in the municipality, you would just allow them to use an electronic location in lieu of physical location. That would be Perfect. Good. Ready? Is everybody okay with this? Sounds good to me. Everybody seems to be in agreement. Yep. Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. So if we can um, see some language by, um, so we can uh, just have a short discussion on it on Tuesday. I think Tuesday we're doing um, uh, title searches and the training, the academy. So we, but we should have a little bit of time at the very beginning that we could do this. Does that make sense? Nope. Yes. Okay. All right, anything else? No. Thank you, Mike and John. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. And Bye. so once again, Susanna, I see her little name down there and we might learn from this to make um, some more permanent changes about the way we do things in the future from, um, I would like, I like also always to see you, Susanna, but you don't um, show yourself very often. <laughs> there you are. <laughs> I don't, I don't mean to be coy. I just no. didn't know if you wanted to see me slurping on tea the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Yesterday, uh, Senator Bray muted himself on his video for a while because so, he was eating a sandwich. So <laughs> we're used to that. Anything else, committee, that um, we have? So next week, I believe that's what we're going to do is um, on Tuesday, the, uh, tell me if I'm right here, Gail. I can't remember from day to day, but I think we're going to do um, title searches and the Academy on Tuesday and this bill. And then on Thursday, we are going to look at, I believe Thursday was when we scheduled um, looking at um, the communities at risk, more, a little bit more conversation about, um, about the voting, just if there were more suggestions or things that had um, been incorporated from our last discussion and hearing other issues that have come up there. Um, I. A couple people have asked to participate in that, and I think one of the issues that we should talk about is the racial, um, the bias incident reporting, not racial, but bias incident reporting, because I think I know that they were working on coming up with a definition, and that was kind of between here and judiciary about what what is bias related reporting and bias incident related reporting. And how do we make it consistent across the state so that we we know when um, there are incidents happening and not necessarily even making them a crime, but so that we can keep track of them so that we know what's happening out there. So I would like to, I think there is um, a group that's been working on that and hear from them about that because uh, that deals with law enforcement. And um, are there other other issues? right now that we can think of? Nope. Nope. Okay. Just stay safe this weekend. Yeah, and that Gail? Before we go, Senator, I know that on Friday of next week, we were going to talk about anything that came up from today regarding municipalities. And I don't know if we have anything that we've identified yet. Gwen, are there other things that um, have come up? Um, 
We, yeah, I mean, yeah, everything. There's a lot of things coming up, um, but I, I don't have a list right now. So I, I, I had heard the testimony yesterday and that that was a topic of discussion. And I, we were kind of waiting to see what the agenda was going to be and, and get it a better feel for. And there's also discussion about having local officials testify. So we have a whole list of um, local officials that wanted to testify on a whole okay. host of different issues. So um, so we're thinking okay. about an RN. I just don't have like a laundry list. Okay, we'll but, um, put that on. And did uh tucker did you get my um email about brattleboro because we did we uh gave some abilities for municipalities to or we're going to hopefully vote on monday oh. around around property taxes but brattleboro is in a very different situation because they they haven't had their town meeting yet right. they had to cancel it because of uh, COVID because they have theirs on the third um, Saturday in March. So they have not had a town meeting. So they don't have a tax rate. They don't have any of that. So um, I sent Tucker the um, email from Peter Elwell and I wasn't sure if it was requ would require additional legislation, Tucker, or if you've even had time to look at that. I did have an opportunity to look at it, Madam Chair, and the message that you sent me was a general message or request from uh, Peter. Um, and it looked like it was for requests that lined up with uh, some of the VLCT recommendations. And uh, I responded that those were taken care of by the general provisions of the municipal property tax bill that you all voted on. Um, so I think if, if you, you go all, if you go all the way down to the bottom, there are four um, particular requests for the town of Brattleboro. All right, I will take a look at them and okay. uh, send a response to the committee. Okay, and then so we could deal with that on Friday also if there needs to be something special for them. Okay. And it isn't that Brattleboro is special necessarily, although I, it certainly is, but um, they have representative town meeting. They don't have the same kind of town meeting that everybody else has. So, anything else? All set. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Sure. Susanna, you. did you have anything to add? No, thank you for checking. Um, I don't have anything to add. If there's anything that uh, I can do to help facilitate anything on the admin side, then please do let me know, as always. And we're always happy to have you with us. And, and it's really nice to have um, somebody from the administration consistently with us. It, it, um, yeah, it's nice. It's Thank refreshing. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Have a great have weekend, a everybody. Have a good Stay weekend. Bye. 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 Bye.